You know, it used to be like T-Birds or Pink Ladies. Things are a little more complicated in high school these days. Let's talk about it today on The 7 at 7. Hey everybody, good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning, how are you? I hope you're having a pretty good week. It's been pretty good so far. Oh, the weather's been so great, but they're Beautiful. saying it's about to get a little warmer this weekend. Oh, bummer. I we're know, such a good bummer. Direction. But fall's coming. I mean, that's the good news. Listen, yeah. I'm glad you're here this morning. We're continuing our conversation about how to help our kids have the best things that God intends for them to have in this life. And this week specifically, we're talking about how to help our, friend, our families and our kids develop healthy relationships, good friendships and family relationships all of their days because none of us want our kids to be lonely. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no. So today we're talking a little bit about the high school years mm. and boy, this is a huge time. These four years, yeah. I mean, maybe the most important 48 months that you're going to be putting in with your kid before yeah. they get ready to leave the house. Maybe right? so. I remember the high school years. They, they weren't, I graduated 12 years ago. So I, they're fading. Those memories wow. are fading a little 12 bit. 12 years. But they were big years. And when I think about high school, I think about all of the movies and TV shows over the decades that have centered around a high school student or just a high school in general. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Spider-Man, Grease, mentioned that one earlier. Breakfast Club, when, uh, Breakfast Club. all When those. I was younger, when I was a kid, my brother and sister were older than me. They were in high school when I was in elementary school, and they would watch Saved by the Bell. And then later than that, it was One Tree Hill. You know what I was blown away wow. by is when I got a little older, and I realized that all of these actors and actresses that played 16 and 17-year-olds were actually like, 35 <laughs> right like that was weird. high school musical <laughs> high school musical is another uh, they were a lot older it was weird uh but we got a little sneak peek into uh what the high school years can look like and we believe they're really important yeah and what really is true is that maybe our kids are mixing it up with all kinds of people in junior high but in high school things really narrow i mean whether they're yeah. in the band or the chess club or they're on the football team or a part of the you know cheer squad whatever yeah. these years they kind of begin to friend up with the people that we hang they hang out with connected to their activities. Sure. You called it earlier like the season of sorting. I think that's really right. We mentioned yesterday during the junior high years that so many junior high kids are involved in 48 different things. They play 17 sports. They're in seven different mm -hmm. clubs. That's not really, that's pretty rare for high school students. A lot of the times, that's very more narrow. Now, they might be involved in one or two things. Now, they might put, they're probably putting more hours into each one of those two things, but they're a lot more narrow focused because at this point, they've probably figured out what they're passionate about, what they love, and what they're good at, what they good at, and they've also found their friend groups. Yesterday, I mentioned the junior high cafeteria, how they move around a whole lot. When you go to high school cafeteria, they got their spots because those are their people. Uh, that is their table. That is their zone. That's their kind of crew that they're with this is so often it's just a big difference that we see uh, between the two schools. It is also a time in which there really is a lot of pressure that comes yeah. from these groupings they get into to yeah. do the right thing or the wrong thing and they Absolutely. can make some really lousy decisions based on their friends and kind of the pressure that's there. Yeah and I'm glad you mentioned this because in our student ministry we've thought a lot about um, hey what, what, what do we kind of think each grade 6th through 12th is saying and what's maybe our response to that and the ninth grade year fits here a whole lot. We think the ninth grader is saying I'm just another fish in the sea. We know that they're called fish a lot. Oh, freshmen. That's very I'm just clever. another fish in the sea. Very our clever. word for freshman year is become and our question is who are are you becoming? Who are you being influenced by? Who are you becoming? As you really, something I tell our high schoolers a lot is you are closer than you realize to being an adult. Yeah. You are not far at all away from making your own decisions, making your own money, starting your own family, even like those things are really not in the future at all. We want our freshmen to know that you are who Jesus says you are. This is where your identity is found. And we want them to be led by the Holy Spirit and God's word rather, rather than just the crowds and culture and influence. And yeah. Like and, and the thing that's beautiful about the church is that it's at the church in the student ministry yeah. that kids from all kinds of different cliques and groups uh -huh. and organizations yeah, come together. Public school, private. Yeah, yeah, and they begin to learn to get along with people that are not like them and don't do all the things yeah. they do. Right. And they find a, a, a core sense of how, why I get along with other people based on their relationship with Christ. Absolutely. There's that commonality. There's that common belief. Acts 2 says that all the believers shared one thing in common, right? Mm -hmm. And it is interesting. Sometimes you see the most unlikeliest, strangest friendships appear uh, here at church, whether it'll be through a mission trip or uh, a, a church camp that we spend a weekend together or something like that. These friendships develop. They never would have 
guess that would have happened. And the truth is, that friendship probably wouldn't have happened in the school scene, uh, but it happened in a really beautiful way here at, at church. It is just such a huge thing, Mom and Dad, that you help your kids in the 7th, 8th, and ninth grade mm -hmm. to ground their relationships and friendships, their primary friendships within the church family. And, man, it pays off when they're in the ninth, 10th, and 11th grade yeah. if you've done that work and you've kind of helped them along. Now, we were talking the other day that not only are these these friendships between uh, you know peers that are going on, but this is also a crucial time for family relationships yeah. and setting the table for the kind of relationship that you're going to have with your kid and they're going to have with their family for decades to follow. It's true, and I think, man, teenagers get a bad rap. Uh, and, you know, pe people that maybe don't take the time to invest in teenagers, don't have them or whatever it might be, speak pretty poorly of them. They don't think they have much to offer. They think they're disrespectful, irresponsible, lazy, all this kind of thing. I don't believe any of those things are true. One thing I do think is true is teenagers have always been the same. Like, that is true. And something that I'm aware of a lot and kind of tell whether parents or maybe it's people that are interested in stepping in to serve is I think teenagers can be intimidating. Mm. They can. And sometimes our perspective is all they're interested in, all they want is cool. But what's true is that high school students aren't as interested in cool as they are real. They just want real. Mm. They want authenticity. So I think what you're talking about is during these high school years, yeah, we're actually building, aiming to build more of a friendship, especially junior, senior year. But it's going to take some work because what a 99 high schoolers out of 100 say when you ask them how their day was? Yeah, good. Nine. What'd you do? Nothing. Mm. Well, that's not actually true. <laughs> it wasn't just good. There, it was actually might have been a total train wreck. Maybe it was a great day, but all you're telling me is good. And then on the other hand, what happened? Nothing? Well, that's not true. Lots <laughs> happen in your day. So we actually have to dig. Like we have to model. Uh, I, I think maybe I'd say this. We got to become really good at two things. Asking questions and listening. We got to mm. get really good at asking questions beyond just how was your day uh, and beyond just what you do and ask and then listening and <laughs> offering authenticity in that, offering understanding. Hey, I've been mm. there before. Yeah, that is hard. Giving some empathy. All this is super important. That's really good. And I think that sometimes parents in about fifth or sixth grade, when their kids begin to get awkward and they begin to dig into yeah. video games or whatever, parents can kind of check out of conversations with their kids. Sure. And then all of a sudden, your kid's 16, you really need to be having important conversations with mm -hmm. them, but you've kind of lost that connection so don't do that parents you got to stay engaged and you mentioned something earlier about the transition from being parent to being like kind of more of a friend mm -hmm. and this timing is really important yeah. like you do it too early and you'll foul it all up if you hang on too hard at the end you'll make your kids bitter yeah and i think it's true maybe one last thing i'd plug in is run out of time is you know another rap another maybe stereotype that gets placed in high schools they don't care about anything now what's true is they probably don't care about much but the things they do they care deeply about mm -hmm. we want to find what those are and we want to help them direct their passions and their heart passions towards things that really matter and we want to pull the best out of them because it's there yeah, well, this is the payoff time. If you've done a good job when they were young and in junior high of helping them to socialize and have friends and be connected both to, to teenagers and to peers and to adults, then these t high school years can be sweet times. Yep. Sometimes it's tough. We haven't gotten all right, and we've got to really work to make up because, boy, that day they're about to leave your house is coming up, mm -hmm. and you want to have a great relationship with them before they go off into the world. Tomorrow we're going to talk about that next step. Okay. Uh, but for today, thanks for plugging in as we talk about your high school students. If you've got a high school kid, we love you. We're praying for you. We sure want to help you along the way. Yep. You guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.